Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the team call, guys. Sorry, I was trying to um, pull up some of my visual aids in the background. So when I show the screen, I'd be able to, to um, go right to them. So people are going to be loading in, kind of popcorning in, um, but we're recording. So welcome to the team call. If this is your first time, I see a couple new faces. All right, I do, yes. Um, welcome. So we do this the first and third Tuesday of each month, um, a tr like a team training type of thing. And then Tuesdays and uh, the second and fourth Tuesdays, we'll do um, a little more hands-on. We call it like a live power hour and different coaches will lead that um, and essentially just kind of walk through what the bottle behaviors look like. So if you're a newer coach, um, you're still learning what the, all that is. And a lot of tonight will be, you know, kind of stuff you're going to tuck in your back pocket. <laughs> um, but I hope you'll be using it soon. Um, so um, the first thing I like to do, this is a new thing, <laughs> um, is I want to hear everyone in the chat, or if you want to popcorn, you know, un unmute and share um, a win in the past week or couple of weeks. Um, I think it's super, I think it's super important to um, approach life in this business uh, specifically from a place of abundance. I think so often we stay in our negativity and the things that we want to change and things that we wish were different about us or our behaviors or whatever. Um, and so I like to start this habit or create this habit of being thankful. So let's uh, let's see you guys share what's a win and it could be anything guys. It doesn't have to be like, you know, I don't care. Just something that makes you happy. Chelsea's planned out 30 days of social media content. That's pretty big. That's very exciting. Think of all the time you've saved yourself. I, that's kind of jealous. Yay, Molly. Good. Let's hear it. It can be that you crushed all your workouts last week. It could be that you just, you got out of bed on, I don't know, just something. It's good. It can be small. We should be thankful for the little things. Um, which by the way, uh, if you guys are not aware, I say it all the time, so I'm pretty sure you are, but I'll just keep beating the dead horse. Um, we have that miracle morning virtual gym, um, basically it's that link, the same link that she used to click into this call tonight is the same link every single morning. There's a bunch of us on there doing our like, uh, you know, miracle morning, which is depends on you know, who you are, what you're doing, you know, which, whether you're just like reading personal development, um, you know, doing, um, some people are doing power hours, whatever, um, people are working out. Um, any time between like 4 a.m. Eastern and like eight or nine, it just kind of people trickle off. But um, please, if you're if you feel like like that would give you some more accountability, I know it's huge for me in getting my butt out of bed when I want to because I'll have a tendency to kind of push the envelope with getting you know getting up a little later. So knowing that those girls are there makes a huge difference in you getting going. Um, and of course, when you have a video on, even though no one's really like watching you work out, you kind of feel like I can't slack off that much if there's a video running. Um, anyway, and then occasionally, it's all on mute like this. We don't really, we don't like, there's no audio, but we'll just do occasional little chat just for fun. So I invite you all to come. It's the more the merrier. It's, it's the, I, I really am very thankful for that group. Okay, so um, tonight I wanted to talk about um, I don't see, I don't see very many sh sharing their wins. I see a few. Katie says she's been getting a lot of feedback about being inspirational. Yes. You've been committing to your miracle morning. Awesome. That's good stuff. Megan rocked an interview. Yay. Awesome. Working out your teenager. Yay. So good. Okay. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Okay. I'm going to, uh, mute yourselves if you notice that for some reason that you become unmute, unmuted. This is supposed to mute everybody upon entry, but sometimes it doesn't actually work. So tonight I wanted to talk about um, follow-ups, and I called it follow-up finesse because I feel like this is an area that a lot of people feel really clunky around um, and awkward, and they're not, they're not sure what to say. And also because I feel like things have started, started to change a little bit. Um, and guys, at any time, if you want to pop a question, I might, I may or may not see it, or you want to chime in, maybe you have some insight or feedback to share. Like, you know, a lot of you coaches who are doing, doing great with this, like, please 
I don't, what I have to share isn't comprehensive at all. So I know a lot of you have other tips that she can insight to share. So please chime in. I do, I, you know, I hate for this to be a one man show. <laughs> I really want you guys to share um, what's working for you. Um, but I feel like since I started this business and what was working for me in the beginning, things change because of social media climate's changed. And I feel like right now, um, and this is my, my take, feel free to, you know, share your opinion. Um, I feel like there's just so many more distractions on social media. There's just so many, there's, there's more platforms. There's more noise. I know, I know when I opened up my first Facebook group, like groups were a new thing. They were, they were just, they were still like a novelty. And so people paid attention, like every post that was posted in a group, like you saw it because they were new and they were exciting and it was, you know, but like now we're like, there's a bazillion groups and you can't keep up with all the posts. Um, but now people are just, I think there's just a lot of noise coming at us. So it was easier to follow up. I don't, I think people are just more distracted and like it's, it takes a little bit more intention. Um, and, and I've noticed this, I guess I'm in the trenches with you. I do the same things. I mean, yes, my business, you know, a lot of things look different. Um, in my business because of how long I've been around and I have, you know, a certain level of credibility now or a, 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 a prospect base, but relationships are still the same and people are still the same. <laughs> and um, I'm doing the same things you are. And I remember when I was challenging myself a couple months ago um, to like, what was it? Beat your best pr promotion Beachbody was doing. I remember like, having like, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm legitimately following up with people like three and four times. I mean, people who already said they were interested, not even like I'm talking to somebody about this for the first time. And they're like, yeah, she's annoying. Like people have already said, yeah, totally. I'm, that sounds awesome. And then it's like, I'm having to like, like chase them. It feels like, um, but what it comes down to, and I, you know, is it's just, it's just the climate. So I've got some tools and tactics, but um, first I want to just, um, share some reminders or, um, thoughts around this. I've brought up Kim Carver's, uh, little chat that he had with us at Super Saturday. Kim Carver is one of the, I'm not forget, what's his, anybody know his actual title? He's one of the like sales people that does the training for Beachbody. I really love him. He's a really good trainer. Um, but one of the things he was saying to us, um, talking to, was talking to the coaches, those of us who struggle with like when people don't respond to us or when people don't, um, or when they say no, or when they seem resistant or they have objections and that is one of the biggest insecurities of a most, most coaches getting started is the fear of hearing no, fear of failure, fear of how people are going to think of them. Um, and I, that was, those are all mine. <laughs> those are all the things that I had to, to overcome. Um, but he said this, and I wish someone had said this to me as clearly as he said that day, but took me, I had to learn the hard way and take the long way around. But um, he said, you've got to remember that People do not, the people on the other side of these messages and the other side of these computer screens, they do not exist to validate you. <laughs> and that's what we are seeking. We're like, we post something, we shoot something out and we just kind of want to know, like, we want validation. We want to feel like, okay, that posted well. And we keep checking back for the likes and the comments and we're looking for validation. And we have to remind ourselves, this is not about you. And that person on the other side, they are there this is this might be the first time someone has offered them a solution like this. Um, if this is somebody who's needing help and needing support and they have goals that they can't, they haven't reached yet. They're obviously, they obviously don't have a history of making pot, good choices. So for us to expect that on these conversations that they're just gonna be like, sign me up. You are so awesome on social media. So inspiring that I mean, I've just got to drop 150 right now. Like we think that's what it's supposed to look like. Um, but it's not an obvious, oftentimes that, <laughs> that first conversation is like the, is, that you've had with them is like, they're just starting to think about it. Um, so just remember that, that if you are, if you're looking for this, the, um, the efforts and the vital behaviors that you're putting out to validate you, that this isn't, it's not going to work. Um, the vital behaviors that you, you know, you learn as a new coach for those of you who are still getting familiar with those words, um, you cannot 
count on those the, the, the feedback and the re reactions from that to tell you how you're how, if you're doing a good job um, because it obviously takes multiple times most of you know this because you've been doing this long enough to know that but I just want to remind you of that and um, I came across a um, who loves Gary V anybody love Gary V okay I was gonna share <laughs> something that he I, I caught on his feed today um, because I thought it spoke so, um, it spoke to this idea. Um, for those of us who feel like posting on social media is enough, uh, you know, we can look around and see people doing awesome on social media as coaches. And we assume, and my husband's the best at this because he knows all you guys now, like he knows who everyone is. And so he always makes assumptions. So-and-so is killing it. I'm like, eh. <laughs> because all he can see is social media. And then I'll be like, oh my gosh, so-and-so is crushing it. It's like, who? I was like, I know, because you don't have someone. But because these are the people who are like, they're just killing it behind the scenes. So there are a lot, there are people who social media is not their jam. They're just not, they're not as like savvy. They're still figuring out. They're not as comfortable, but they're so amazing at connecting. They're so amazing at developing relationships. and so amazing at uh, that, like following up that they make it happen. And there are people who it's like the opposite. Now, obviously we would like to be better, good at both of them. And a lot of people are, but it's interesting that we make assumptions about how somebody's doing in this business because of how good their social media looks or how consistent they are on social media or how like how many likes or comments they get on social media. I let me tell you that is not the entire story. Um, now I believed that too when I looked out to other coaches and like my peers, but now I have a large team and I have all the numbers. <laughs> I have all the metrics. I see what's happening. I know what's happening. Um, now that's not to say they're not making an impact. That's not to say like what they're sharing isn't valuable by any means. Um, absolutely. Anything that's shared on social media that's positive is, is phenomenal, whether it converts to a sale or not. Um, but my point is when it comes to running a business, which is what most of us are doing here, um, that's not the whole story. And so I don't, and I say this to you to not, to like help you to remember to not like, feel bad when a post doesn't do well or a, you know, a comment that you're putting out doesn't seem to like resonate. Now, I get it. I want those feel good dopamine hits. Like I'm, I'm checking my posts. Ooh, that one had, I'm, ta I'm analyzing them too. And you should, but I just want to help like just to remind you to disconnect your um, like worth as a coach or your validity as a coach to those things. Um, and to remind you that why you're here. Um, and so I'm going to play this clip from Gary V. If any of you have, um, have sensitive <laughs> ears and you can't like earmuffs, if you have children around, cause you know, Gary V drops some, some F bombs, you know, um, there's one, I think in, in this one. Um, so I just wanted to share this. I love him. Um, uh, even though I have to be careful where I'm listening to it, but, um, I feel like, I don't know, he's just an entrepreneur that crushes it. Okay. So he references like people who post and like don't respond to the people in the comments because he's talking about a different type of business. Um, like, you know, in our, in the nature of our business is we are doing conversations and having follow-ups. And so you'll hear him reference in the beginning, just like he's trying to tell other business owners and entrepreneurs, you've got to engage in the comments. But I'm, what I'm referring to is building relationships behind the scenes and, and following up. So let me see if this is the one. It might take a second to play. The amount of people that tell me that they're struggling, I look at it, and they have not replied to one person in the comment section of their posts. You're trying to build a community, yet you are not part of it. My favorite thing that's happening right now in my comments on YouTube and Instagram, and let it be very clear here, if you want to learn what I do, I read all my comments because that's how I know what to do next. The amount of people that just post and leave, no engagement, no reading comments, is a clear indication to why so few people win. Imagine hosting a dinner in your home and putting down the plate and leaving the fucking house. That is what 98% of you are doing on Instagram, the place you want to win. Short-term behavior with no good intent behind it that is completely predicated on what's in it for you has never worked for anybody in the history of time. So um, I liked that 
analogy, this, you know, having a dinner party and like putting down a plate and then like leaving. And that's what so many people do in this business. Um, or just like sending that first message or sending that first, having, having that first conversation or getting, you know, sort of getting there, but then like bailing and assuming, well, they know where I'm at when they're ready. Um, and that's not how it works. Like he said, like short-term behavior, like that's never, you're never going to win. And so this is not anything that new for a lot of you. Um, but I do think a lot of us need reminders because we, especially the, sometimes the longer you're in the business, you assume, well, everybody knows what I do. Everybody knows. I mean, I've just been posting that forever. Like, oh my gosh, for five and a half years, I've been doing this. And I still have to personally invite people who know that I'm there for them, who know that I've invited them many times before. They want that personal invitation. So this is just a reminder. Um, so here's another thing that doesn't work. Just a reminder um, for some of you is this mass presentations. So when it comes to like sneak peeks, these are great. When it comes to flash sale, like you just did, um, you know, that's great. And it might get some attraction. You, you must follow up for those of you who like tag, you know, tag people in posts or a call to action. Um, well, that's who wants to have mass invitation to something. You want someone to reach out to you personally and say, hey, you may have seen that I'm doing this, um, you know, this boot camp on X date. Um, I wanted to follow up with you because I know that you'd mentioned X goal. So I know this is not new for most of you, but still a lot of, I still get a lot of questions. Um, Megan, how do you, you know, how do you convert here? How do you close this sale? And I'll, and I'll ask them, well, let me see like your screenshots or your conversations between and it's like kind of like, well, I mentioned it to them like, you know, a month ago. And I'm like, you remember how this works, right? Um, so there's a statistic. I think it's like, who remembers it? There was like a, um, a, a, a statistic that said most, uh, like 100% of the sales or whatever, whatever percent of the sales happen between the, the fifth and the 12th uh, interaction. I have a little graphic that I want to share with you. I am going to be getting into more of my tips, but I wanted to do a review of some of these things. All right, let me find my follow-up message. Here it is. So this is a, okay. So um, there's like a mat, I think it's actually more than this, but there's like a magic number five. Um, and I guess it depends on what you call a touch point because it's what you post on social media, you know, do you consider that a touch point? It just kind of depends on how much people see what you're putting out. But I want you to look at this and think about the conversations you might be having and think about how you might be giving up. <laughs> before you get to this point. And it doesn't mean that you've asked them five times to join your challenge group. It might, or to join the team, um, it might, but look at these statistics and how and what majority of people are 90% are giving up after the fourth try. So tuck that in your back pocket and remember um, that 2% of people are even going to like convert on your first invitation. Um, so I, I was reading this sales journal and um, this guy was saying, you know, here's where things are. He said, no, we've heard a lot of, we, we, we hear a lot of salesmen say they don't want to feel pushy, salesy or sleazy. Um, when we think about following up and how many times have you heard that? Who has coaches here who struggle with, your, your coaches come to you and they're like, I don't want to be pushed. I don't want to be a sales. I don't want to be a salesperson. Um, but he's saying it's not, it's not pushy. It's just buyer's buyer's behavior. It is not sleazy. It is not pushy to continue to follow up. It is buyer behavior. It is a traditional buyer behavior. Think about how many times it took you for someone to, to like Molly didn't, wasn't it Molly or was it Chelsea or both of you? I'm looking, I see your faces right now. Um, like I know it, like if, if you had shared the business opportunity with me, I would have definitely like not paying attention to you the first time. It took me a while. So just a reminder. Okay. Eight times, nine times. Wow. See, you got to go hard to get the good ones, huh? 
right. T seven touches, that's what Brandon is. What does he do? He does, is he's in sales type role too? Okay, um, okay. All right, so before we go into my best tips, I wanna just be sure to review for anybody the anatomy of an invite. And this is, you know, my kind of anatomy. It can look a little different, um, especially if that person, you know, comes to you, maybe because you post something on social media. But um, I believe it is really important if you can't at all find out number one what their goals are sometimes we can get really excited when someone says hey i'm interested um and we just start to like go into all the details and the facts and the benefits and we're just uh, we're pumped right and they've already asked us so like oh my gosh i have have one on the line um be sure to know what somebody's goals are be sure to get them as, as emotional as you can um dig in to get somebody to a place so that when it comes down to you offering something they're gonna feel kind of almost foolish to say yeah I, I can't change all of that drama for that price or, you know, once you've kind of poured your guts up to somebody, there's a vulnerability that um, it makes, but if like, if, but oftentimes what you'll get is, Hey, what's it? Hey, Megan, how much does it cost? And I'm like, yeah, we're not going to do that. Mm -mm. No, we're going to talk. <laughs> um, so I'm like, you know what? And a little pinned, you know, on, you know, what packages. So, you know, tell me, what are your goals? And then I want to get deeper, um, as, as deep as I can get to know, you know, what is in the, what is in the, um, the way of those goals? What do you feel like your greatest struggles are? What, um, do you feel like nutrition is a struggle or is it quality? Is it quality? I'm asking all kinds of questions. I want them to open up, get them talking. Once someone's talking, like they'll, they can, they'll pour their guts out. So that's the key. Uh, is making sure that you can get to goals. Then, it's, then you can start to share what you have to offer. Still hold off the price, okay? They've already mentioned their goals. Now share what you have to offer. Align it and customize how it's going to suit their goals. If they, you know, mention something about, you know, they just always get off track and you feel like, oh my gosh, they're gonna love the community. Um, or I don't know, whatever it is that you feel like you wanna highlight, customize your offerings for how it's going to help them specifically. Um, and then end with a question, not what's, what's my least favorite thing? Who, who's going to, who can, who wants to just chime in and say it so I don't say it. Just let me know. <laughs> it's the kiss of death. Sorry. You know, I have the same things. <laughs> don't end with that. Okay. Um, let me know what you think. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Um, it's, it's the natural, it's very natural and I used to do it. Um, but you're, you're just inviting crickets and if crickets is a new word for you, it just means, oh my gosh, I can hear the crickets outside my, my window right now. Cause I live in the woods, <laughs> but like, it's like, Nobody's resp responding to you. So, um, end with the questions. Who has a favorite question that they end with? Mine is, does that sound like something that would benefit you? Because, uh, duh, who's gonna say no? Of course would. Uh, now that might not mean they, they wanna do it, but of course they're gonna say yes. So who has a good question? Do you think that sounds like it would help you? Good one. Or um, does that sound like it might be a good fit for you? Um, does anybody else have anything? Yeah, Chelsea just said it. Does that sound like your jam? See, I love that because that's that might be the way you speak, you know? Yeah, make it sound like the way you talk. Like if that's how you talk, like, yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. So um, I love that because it invites a response. <laughs> um, it doesn't mean you'll get one, but let me know what you think. Basically, you're just waiting for them to respond. And then when you feel like, when you respond, you feel like you're harassing them. So, um, do you think that would help you reach your goals? That's good because obviously it would. Like, you know, um, so, I lost my train of thought now. <laughs> oh, okay. So one of the things I used to do when I um, was, I think Christine Dwyer taught this to me. Um, and this was when I was sharing the business opportunity with videos, like I was sharing I was sharing recorded videos about the business to people. Um, so what we would do, and, and it was really, and it really worked. Um, now I don't share content usually that, so like this would work, but this might work for you for, for some reason. Actually, it would work for you, anybody. But I would say, um, hey, take a look at this. I'll, I'll follow up with you tomorrow night at eight, or I'll follow up with you at X date. When you do that, you have now, number one, you've already let them know you're following up with them. So it's not that situation where you're like, hey, it's me again, remember the thing I talked about? No, no, okay, okay, no, 
That's kind of what it feels like, right? <laughs> like you are, you're letting them know. So they expect to hear from you and you're kind of giving them more accountability to actually look at it. <laughs> like, cause if you just say, Hey, here's it, here it, here it is. We're all too busy. We're just not going to do it. We're just, we're all busy. Um, so I like that because it outlines when you're going to hear from me and it gives them accountability. And when you're, when you're in their inbox, it's not a surprise. Um, so again, let me just, I forgot to like go through this kind of all the things that keep people from responding. You see, you know, they've seen your message. Let's just all think about our, our behaviors. Like, how many times do you check a message at the stoplight or in the grocery lo like store line? Or you know you shouldn't because you're like, I can't answer it, but you kind of can't help it. Um, how many times do you check messages when you're busy and you think, oh, it's just going to be a, a, you know, I'm just going to check it. But then you realize, oh, this is going to require more conversation. And I'm not in a position to have a conversation or think about this right now. Or So number one, I do that all the time. I'm assuming most people do, and I'm not only only person. So just keep that in mind when you have people who have not responded to your messages. Okay. They're probably just like you, pretty freaking busy and the squeakiest wheel gets oil. So you got to be squeaky. And we're going to talk about, we're just going to try to figure out ways that we're not obnoxious and squeaky, but I know it. I need someone to prompt me for certain things. If it's urgent and it's in my face, I deal with it. That's, that's a general rule for most people. Um, we're waiting for something to get squeaky. And that even works in the business with like, I think with coaches, like a coach will get my time if they're more adamant about it. <laughs> you know, if they're following up with me, then I'm like, I'm yeah, yeah, let's talk. But like, if a coach is like waiting for me to like prompt them, they're probably going to be waiting a long time. Like, uh, you know what I mean? So that's just behavior of that's just human behavior. And I think especially for most people who are, are like us, we're just we're ba we're balancing so many different things in life. And that which is most urgent at that moment is going to get our attention. And let's just be real. If we have one, if we, we don't even need a subconscious reason to like put off our fitness journey, like, right? Like we want to do it. We want to start this thing. We know it will be a good thing. We want accountability to it, but we will allow things to subconsciously draw us from it. So you've got to be that person who's like, Hey, Hey girl, you, you mentioned this. Okay. Um, and I'm here for you. Okay. So that was kind of my anatomy because I wanted to make sure you had goals so that you can bring them up again when you follow up with them. It's important to have that personal information, I think, um, when you show up in your inbox again. So my best tips. Number one, y'all best be tracking with something. You've got to track because how can you follow up if you don't know who you've been talking to and how many times you've <laughs> you followed up with them. So if you're not tracking and this is an area of struggle for you, get on it. I know Stephanie Marsilia, she has tentatively agreed to um, do a team call for you guys on her amazing um, use of my connection builder. Um, there's a, there's a pretty, there's a, isn't there a free trial? And there's like a cheap, like a, a cheap option for it. And then you can pay, I think maybe more with one month free. Um, it will, you will make money on that sucker if you're tracking well, and she's using it really well. I use it too. Um, not nearly as like well as she does, but, um, I'm excited for you guys to have her share how she's using my connection builder. Um, yeah, it's a great tool. So anyway, even if you have pen and paper, just have something. These are people's lives. You have a business. There's no other option. There's no other option than to track. You don't have a business. If you choose not to do this, you must track. You must take these people seriously that you're talking to. Now people ask this, so who do I track everybody? Do I write down every new contact? Do I write down like, ah? it depends on where you're at in the business. If you're a newer coach, you're going to write down more names, you know, looser connections than, than I might now. So if you know, it just depends on where you're at. If you're adding 20 new followers a day or something like that, that might be a little excessive to like write down every single name. Um, you know, maybe it just depends on where you're personally at in the business and the number of conversations you need to be having and then the invites you have to be putting out to get to your goals. So, you know, for me, it's kind of, I put down those names of people that we started a conversation and it's some back and forth, but 
for you, it might just be a new follower who's responded to your message or, you know, just, it just really depends. Um, and it will evolve as your business evolves, as the number of contacts evolve. So there's not really a rule of thumb. It's just you've got to be writing down these people's names so that you can be following up with them. Um, and I already shared my other best tip was um, to end with a question. Never let me know. Um, the three, oh, see, good. I actually already covered some of these in my other. Um, the, th the third one was the deeper you get with someone, the better. Um, they feel rude not replying. Um, keep conversations going. So this is for those where, you know, you've invited or you've put something out there and they're not responding and maybe you followed up. But they're still kind of, they're just not, go, they're just not, it's just not going anywhere. Mo this is what I used to do. I used to run for the hills. I thought I'm annoying. They don't like me. They don't want anything to do with this. Um, so I'm just going to leave them alone and I'm move on to the next person. And man, this was like the stupidest thing I did because those same people that I had gotten down the road with a little bit, they were f ending up joining a, the, a program with somebody else. I had kind of like done half the work for the coach they signed up with, you know, and shoot, I've, I've probably snagged a whole lot of people who maybe someone's share introduced each body with them. You know, I don't know you know, who knows, but like, they just were seeing my social media um, and I invited them, but they weren't ready. But then they started to watch this other coach and that person invited them at the right time. I don't, you know what I mean? So um, I have watched it happen like so many times that somebody wasn't, didn't seem interested or whatever. And I just assumed, okay, I'll stay, I'll stay away. Um, you've got to stay in conversation with this person. Or if it's an awkward stage, getting conversation going again about something else. Just get, peel back the layers and just keep that conversation going. One of the things Ray Higdon says, so you can start to um, write down some of these different ways that um, I've used and I've learned. Ray Higdon, he's a big network marketing dude. His big one is, um, it's like after four days, if you haven't, if maybe you've, someone's acted like they were interested, but they haven't followed through with the purchase um, or whatever the next step. And he'll say, hey, I'm so sorry it's taking me this long to get back to you. I've been so busy enrolling, you know, enrolling my new coaches in our training. How are you? So basically what he's doing is like, okay, it would be too awkward because we've already kind of followed up a couple times and they're just not moving forward. Let me just get them talking in. We don't have to, we don't have to make the sale happen if that's not what they want to do. But I want them to like, know, like, I don't want to leave you hanging. And I want you to know, I'm to know I'm here. I've done this a lot. Sometimes people, they really do just want to like, not, not make that purchase. And they, and they, and they, they're happy to engage and like, yeah, I'm doing great. Blah, 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 blah. The other half are like, oh, hey, yeah, I meant to order. Okay. So oftentimes they're looking for this prompt. Um, so I would love to hear any of you guys scripts on those people who say they're interested. Um, but I'll share a couple of my best, you know, my best ones. Um, and they usually involve creating some kind of urgency or FOMO. Um, and that's why it's really important to always have a group, <laughs> something to invite to like a free group or a, a pay, you know, a challenge group. Um, that has a date as a starting, a, you know, a starting time where people have to get in there. They have to access the menus they have to access. Uh, so I'll say something like, Hey girl, I'm finalizing my numbers, um, by Friday. And, um, you know, just to make sure everyone has their recipes and, you know, you know, whatever menus already, something like that, whatever. Um, and I, um, wanted to see if you wanted me to still save your spot. What that does is it in the case of them, Hey, it's kind of rude if you don't follow up with me kind of rude if you don't say no or yes, or you don't do something. And that works like a charm. Like it works all the time. Um, Chelsea says something about her spots closed for so-and-so group tomorrow. And she doesn't want her to miss out. I love it. Do you want me to save your spot? Yes. This is a great one. I love it. <laughs> um, okay. This is the part that I meant to um, go into with these people that you're trying to keep the conversation open when they're not actually like giving you more after that for like that offer. They're generally having some kind of object, objection. They're generally struggling with something. You want to keep, you want to peel back some layers. You want to keep, you don't want to leave them hanging because they're struggling with something and you want to be able to validate their feelings. And, I don't, and notice I said validate their feelings, not answer their objections. You can share 
of, you know, you can deal with objections, but I think it's more important to validate what's going, what people are struggling with, um, what their biggest fears are. Um, when it comes, maybe it's, you know, investing financially, maybe it's, um, you know, they've had, they've tried things before that weren't, didn't work. Um, to, and to really validate their feelings and let them know that like, um, you know, you understand that, you know, make sure that's kind of where you go, not, well, now let me answer your objection. Stephanie says, um, it sounds like I'll take you, oh, it sounds like not, in, isn't a great time, now isn't a great time after all, no worries. I'll take you off my list for now and hopefully we can re reconnect sometime in the future. Yes, I love that, Stephanie. I was gonna share one, one very similar to that, which essentially does the same thing. Um, where do I have it? I wrote it down. Mine was less, my, not, mine was more, more direct. Um, hey, I haven't heard back from you regarding, regarding my Wellness Warrior Bootcamp. Um, so I'm assuming your goals or your priorities have changed. Let me know if there's anything I can do to support you in the future. Because what that says is, this is like, I'm not going to keep doing this. Um, so if your goals or your priorities have changed, like, then that makes sense. So I'm going to move on. But most people are like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> no, I, I'm just not whatever. And they'll give you their objection. Um, but I think this is really important to do this and not to just leave them alone and not to leave well enough alone. Because I think it's important to create boundaries in relationships where it's not okay to leave me hanging and then I'm gonna come chase after you. Like be an adult, I'm an adult, I can hear no, it's okay. I'm not, my friends aren't gonna be hurt. Um, but you know, be respectful that like, you know, I'm, I'm offering you support. So you can, you can do that in a, in a kind way, but, and not just because of your principles, because if you want people to take you seriously, you have to take your business and how you carry yourself seriously. And it shows desperation when we, I think it shows more, more I'm desperate and I just need a sale when I just move on to the next person. Cause I'm like, well, I don't have time. If you're not interested, you're not, okay, you're just a number anyway. So I'm just going to go ask the next person, the next person. I've been, I've had this happen to me. Like I've had, I have, and, and it makes me feel that way. Um, like I had the girl who's talking to me about something else, but like, because it wasn't going to be like really easy for her. And I wasn't saying no, I was just saying like, well, I can't do that right now. Cause I'm doing that, you know, but like, you know, but she like, it was like, dang, she was really just looking for a sale and it wasn't going to like suit her right now. So she didn't have time to like, be like, you know, <laughs> um, but like, that's what it felt like. And so I think there is, it just says something about you when you carry yourself confidently and professionally and you're closing that conversation and not just like, okay, well, I'm, I don't have time for this. I'm just going to go talk to somebody. That, that's the way it can come across. So I think that closure is really important, but I think like Stephanie was saying, like people respond to, because they don't want you to leave. They, those goals are still real. They're just not ready for whatever reason, or there was something that, or, or they just had to change a diaper and they forgot to answer your message. And they're like, never mind. Yes, I'm sorry. I meant to. So anyway, um, so I have a couple more tips and then I was going to just share some more scripts and I can just copy paste those into our event. But, um, after validating their feelings, um, creating FOMO kind of like what I mess mentioned in the group or in the, um, that last script is something that creates hype urgency, create FOMO, um, always have something planned. Number five is to never take them off your list. A lot of people that thought, oh, they're into CrossFit and they're like, so they're so paleo, they can't even touch quinoa. So they'll never be into this. And then, you know, <laughs> um, they'll never be into Shakeology. And so like, I just assume, make stupid assumptions because of wherever they're currently at. Things change, things change, things change. So never take people off your list. I've watched many people join other coaches because I was dumb. So learn from me. Um, number six is to do your vitals and blocks. We talked about this before, but I feel like I just get, uh, it's, it's more efficient to do follow-ups like on a one day a week, like a follow-up blitz um, that might help you. Um, you maybe you do other vital behaviors and blocks, but like, I feel like for, for me, follow-ups, I just do them in mass. Fridays in the weekends tend to be 
the best time to do follow-ups. Um, they, they, they tend to be the easiest to get responses from. I think people are just busy during the week and they're just kind of in their own chaos. And like, if you talk to me, like on a Monday, my inbox is, is like, I'm sorry, I might get to you tomorrow. Monday is just kind of crazier. And I think people are just a little more like, so that, I mean, that's just kind of like a generalization, but I think doing vitals and blocks kind of helps with this kind of like following up anybody you can think of. Um, and then lastly, and is just to create more opportunities to follow up by doing things like story polls, because stories are what are really working right now for most people. I think, um, stories are really hot for, uh, gaining traction, uh, but those polls are great because you can say yes, or heck yes, <laughs> you know, whatever, or yes, or maybe, or, um, sign me up or send me the details or, you know, um, and you can respond to every single person. Right? Like it's so awesome because you have a bunch of people to respond to. Molly says, <laughs> you like that, Sarah? Um, also, for people that join you and then go MIA, you just reach out to them and, oh my gosh, I'm the, I'm the worst coach, coach ever. I've been messaging and emailing, but nothing. Uh, okay, can you, open it? can you talk? Because I'm like trying to read this and I'm like sounding dumb. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So um, just like in Chelsea and I are doing um, the in the app and my people are like, not, they're just not having it. And, but Chelsea's people are rocking it. And it's so great to see. And I mean, I've been emailing them video emailing them messaging them. But like, nothing. And I'll even send follow up emails to people who haven't responded. And, and so I just sent, um, and we're like, we just, before this call, we're figuring out our September. And I was like, okay, I'm going to message all of the people and be like, Hey, I just want to let you know, I see that you're not checking into the group. Um, we're putting together our next group and I want to know like what your thoughts are. It's okay. If you've fallen off the wagon, that's what I'm here to do. Blah, 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 blah. And they're all like, Oh my God, thank you for reaching out. Like, I've been crazy. I got an injury and then I got a new job and it's all the things. And so I think even when like we think, Oh my God, like we suck. It's all of our fault. It's like, no, it's that people lives happen. So. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and yeah, this definitely goes for groups. Like, and that happens all the time. And oftentimes we assume the worst and like, let's just like use this as a rule of thumb in general. Like the worst thing you can do is assume the worst of anybody in real, any kind of relationship. We can, we want to project the worst case scenario. Think of the best case scenario. It's better to be wrong about that than the alternative. Oh my gosh, I'm annoying. I'm going to leave her alone when really she, that person would be like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for not giving up on me. I've heard that. I can't tell you how many times in the, the, the many years I've been doing this. Like, thank you so much for not giving up on me. Knowing that now I can't leave anybody hanging or can't assume the worst. Even if I'm like, man, they're really, like, I really don't like me, but I still can't assume that. So just do yourself a favor and do them a favor and don't assume, don't project your insecurities on somebody else by not following up with them, by not asking them, by not, you know, engaging more into that conversation. Um, we do this. I mean, we do this all the time. <laughs> so a uh, great Great ad there, uh, Molly. Okay, let me see if I had any more. Oh, if I do have somebody who have a hard time like you getting to follow up with me, um, I'll say, you know, even after giving them the prompt about my group starting, I'll say something like, hey, Jane, no worries if now isn't the right time. Should I follow up with you next month? And that gives me permission to like talk to them next month rather than feel like, okay, they're just not interested. And then I feel weird coming back next month to them, you know? So, um, you know, there's just something simple you can do. Um, or I'll say this, uh, Hey Sue, our new coach training gets started on Monday. Once you're enrolled, I can get you all, you know, added in blah, blah, blah. The next steps. Um, did you have any trouble enrolling? So I'll ask people, cause like maybe I've sent them the link and I'm like, are they struggling with the link? I assume the best. I don't assume the worst. I'm like, maybe the link wasn't working. Maybe I messed up. Um, so I'll ask that question. And that usually is a prompt. Like, oh no, I got behind or I started it when I was out, but then I, whatever. Um, you feel unorganized of who I should invite and follow up. Is there a method where you message a certain person so long after adding them 
and invite him. No, I, I mean, if anybody wants to chime in, I don't know if there's like a, a, a rule of thumb. I think it just depends on the person, the relationship and how that conversation goes, where that conversation goes, um, you know, where it's led. If you're getting the conversation about, you know, I mean, if, if, if it's not gotten to fitness yet, you haven't gotten anywhere, like in terms of like an invite. So they're a friend that you want to continue to like be a friend to um, and hopefully, you know, get to that place. But like, you don't, I think you don't give up on anybody. Um, but when in terms of like, you've invited them and they're just not having it, like, and you're just keeping it, I think you've got to eventually be like, like, I respect myself not enough to not chase you. So if your goals or priorities have changed, you know, cool. I get it. Like I'm, you know, I'm here when you need me. So if you mean just like you added them and you're just kind of friends, like, I, um, I think it just depends. All relation, all relationships are, are different, but I think there is some savvy to leading conversations to, you know, groups and fitness, um, because it's what you do and it's, it's part of your lifestyle. So I think it's, you know, there does, there does, come some skill in like leading conversations there. Um, oh yes. So Sarah was saying, um, my connection builder is really awesome because you can schedule your follow-ups. It prompts you. So, you know, like if I, you can, and you can schedule it, I can make it like two days from now or a week from now or a month from now. So this is good for your challengers. So if you're like, okay, I had a new co a new coach sign up or a new challenger sign up. Um, and I want to make sure after this 30 day group that I'm keep staying in touch with them, you know, the, you know, whatever, not like still, still nurturing them. Maybe you want to follow them on a monthly basis. You can schedule all that within my connection builder. It's really, it's really cool. Um, does that, anybody have any specific questions or anybody who's got some more value to share on this want to on mute and chime in? Do you have some people you've like stopped talking to because you haven't talked to them enough? <laughs> you realize now that, okay, I maybe have gotten to two, three or four, but I definitely haven't gotten to five touch points. So I have a lot on the table right now. I got a lot of low hanging fruit and it's all my, and like, they're just sitting there. We got a lot of that. <laughs> I think most of us do. I know that I, I'm sure I do. Um, people that just haven't gotten to that point with, or I just, you know, naturally have like backed off. Um, but I've said it before, a lot of, a lot of the people that I'm looking at right now, it was, um, multiple. So, you know, think about, think back now, some of you, it's you're like, well, I don't understand. Like I joined you and like, I was ready. Um, so it's a lot harder for people like that to understand, but like, think back to how, how many of you, like it took multiple like invitations and you probably had to watch your coach <laughs> for a certain amount of time before you would have joined them in the first place. So um, just think when you start to create, like create all this drama in your head and operate out of insecurity, think back to like what it took for you to get to a place where you're like, okay, I'm in. Right. And so what, uh, Chris, what I think that does is it takes all the, um, the emotion out of it, you know? Um, and I think that's important because it is, you know, it does, it is a business, even though we're trying to be personal and relatable. Um, I think we still have to like, people want a professional still. People want a warm fuzzy, I think professional, but they still want someone who's going to take, is taking themselves seriously. Like I want the person that I'm like my life coach. Like I want, I mean, yeah, I want them to like be nice to me, be a warm fuzzy and be my friend and like ask me how I'm doing, but I still want her being like, uh, somewhat authoritative, <laughs> like, like, Hey, you need accountability, right? So that's what I'm here for. <laughs> um, so like, I think we want that. We don't want someone who's kind of like, Oh, it's okay. Either way. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Never mind. Yeah. It's cool. Like we don't want that. We don't want a wishy washy coach. We want someone who's like, I got you. I got you if you're ready. Um, but not like, Oh, well maybe if it's, if it, if that suits you, um, okay, I'm just going to slip away because I don't want my feelings hurt. So, um, you know, even if it's like, you have to work on what I say, you know, practice, practice that confidence and it will naturally come. I know some of you rock stars can chime in with some extra gold nuggets. Do 
be the coach you want. I like it, Molly. Okay, nothing. Who's gonna order um, pumpkin spice Shakeology in a couple weeks? <laughs> you better order it. It doesn't matter if you like it because you know all those other people out there want it. I'm not a pumpkin spice person really either. I think it's fine. But um, I know that I have a lot of people who will eat, who will drink that stuff. So I'm certainly going to be getting it to like have that. Uh, yeah, because people, it's going to be like special when it's, you know, it's when it's out and it's limited edition. So like people are going to be jonesing for it. I'm going to be like, I got my baguettes, uh, 14 count packets. Yeah, that's on the 17th. So mark your calendars because it will sell out. Um, who knows how fast. Um, it's 70, I forget with, with the coach and retail prices. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's the 14 pack. It's not on H, can't get on HD. I think you can only do five boxes per order. Um, yeah, I can't remember the price. It's on the FAQ, so check it out. Or I'm sure I put it in the newsletter on su Sunday. All right, y'all. Well, I'm going to let y'all go. Um, uh, I'm going to drop a little, I'm going to drop a little post in the team page um, to ask what your favorite takeaways were. And I'll do a little raffle, raffle just for fun because that's what I do. <laughs> Any questions, though, before I... All right. For pumpkin spice. No, no, not, not specifically for pumpkin spice. This is FAQ for that. Y'all can read. <laughs> All right. Good night, guys.